Is Arista EDU 400 film all that it's cracked up to be? Let's take a look. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. With our Tri-X in blue, we have Arista 400 in red. Now this curve is almost textbook in that we have a slow toe that smooths out into a straight line and then a curve creating a shouldering at the top. Now we have a really slow toe curve here. That means our shadow separation is going to be not very good uh, compared to Tri-X, at least on paper. We'll see here in a moment what the actual prints look like. The middle portion, pretty good straight line, good separation, beginning to shoulder out at the top, but it's a slow, graceful shoulder. So while we might not have the best separation, it shouldn't be awful. So other than that, it's a fairly smooth line. Let's go ahead and look at the prints and see what this looks like in the real world. Here we have Tri-X. Here we have Arista 400. Okay, immediate impression, this is a little underdeveloped. It is also 400 speed film. The shadows look a little bit darker, but I think that's more of a mid-tone response. Um, but the actual detail within the shadows at 400 looked the same. Uh, so let's look at some of the general 
differences here. We have a different spectral response right here in our red and cyan. That's strange considering Arista 100 and 200 were exactly like this with a triax where we were truly panchromatic. Here with the 400, we are getting a lighter red and a darker cyan. So if we look at the highlights, yes, we're a little dull on the highlights, so it is a little underdeveloped, but the cyan shirt is darker because of the response of the film. The skin tone is a little bit smoother, even though it is a little underdeveloped, it's a little smoother because as we have seen with films like Ferrania and Foma and things like that, when we have films that are more red sensitive, then the red tone of my skin gets smoothed out. So I think this shows uh, that it is a very different film from the other two Arista films that we have. Still a decent film uh, so far, so we'll get down into the particulars in just a moment. Be prepared for these slight tonal differences. That means, realistically, your skies on a landscape are going to have a little bit darker sky tone because that cyan color is going to be rendered a little darker. Um, and then reds, if you're photographing foliage or buildings, um, skin tones, things like that, are going to be a little bit lighter than films like this. Okay, now let's go ahead and zoom in and take a peek at some of the uh, the fine differences here. Okay, zoomed in here, we can see that our grain is a little bit rougher at a 400 speed film. Our shadows are technically the same density, but I feel like we have far less separation. So it gives the impression of um, uh, not really underexposure and not really deeper blacks, just it just looks overall a little darker in there. But I think really it's just because our, if you are a zone system person, our zones one, two, and three aren't separating nearly as neatly as um, the triax. Here we can see the grain structure a little bit better. It is fairly large relative to triax. Still not bad. I mean, it's not like we're shooting a 3200 speed film here, but it is definitely a larger grain when viewed side by side. Here in the collar and the shoulder, we're getting good detail. We're getting the fine texture represented. It just doesn't seem as sharp as the Tri-X in this fine detail. I mean, it's okay. It's better than the 100 speed film, but I felt the 200 had an even sharper grain appearance, uh, even though it was finer. I don't think this is a matter of the large grain obscuring detail. It just doesn't seem like the edges of, say, the ribbing of the collar is as sharp and crisp. It's not a focus issue because definitely between the the top of the shoulder, or I guess the back of my neck, up to the front of the collar, there is definitely clear focus. Just doesn't seem quite as sharp. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the eye. Okay, so here we are in the face. Again, we can see the texture of the skin. It just doesn't qu seem quite as sharp as the triax. Uh, the tones are a little dull, and that could be remedied through a little bit longer development time to get the highlights up there, but it definitely, with that slightly greater red response, smoothed out the uh, red of my skin, so the tones are more even, uh, blotchiness and things like that are taken care of but I'm not getting that crisp highlight glare off my forehead and nose like I am with the Tri-X. But that's just well, development time, like I said. But it does make it look, with that shorter development time, and in combination with, I think, the lack of separation in shadow tones, just gives it a dull look. So, not my favorite of the Aristas. I feel like the 200 had a little bit better potential than the 400, but... For price, 
I mean, this is it is an inexpensive film. You're just going to get a little bit different response than a Tri-X. A little bit less panchromatic, a little bit uh, a little bit more towards the red. Not quite an infrared, but definitely more red plus. Okay, that's going to be it for this time. Uh, if you want to use this film, you can get it from B&H and Freestyle. I believe it is Freestyle's house brand. It's pretty good, not quite as sharp as I would like to see. Um, if you need that extra speed, go for this. But if you want, I think, in my opinion, a better film from Arista, get the 200. So if you want to help support this channel, you can help support through merchandise, um, or you can just keep on clicking these videos because I do get fractions of a penny for every view uh, from YouTube. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.